Hi and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. I'm Manuel and today I have a quick side note for you. So the other day a friend asked what ride share meant in the context of CubeSat missions, so I thought I could make a short video about how satellites get to space. So rockets or launch vehicles, if you want to sound fancy, come in a variety of different sizes and purposes. There are smallish ones like the ones uh, enthusiasts like Joe Bernard build, who by the way has an excellent channel about this, to stupidly large launch systems like SpaceX's Starship. The ones we are interested in today are those that are large enough to go fast enough to actually put something in orbit around the Earth, or deploy a payload as they say, and are also commercially available as of making this video. There are a few that fit these criteria, but today I want to focus on two. The Electron by Rocket Labs and SpaceX's Falcon 9. The Electron stands 18 meters tall and is considered a small launch vehicle, while the Falcon 9 is 70 meters tall and is considered a medium launch vehicle or a heavy launcher if you strap three of them together and make thus a Falcon Heavy. Now the most important difference lies in how much they can carry up to low Earth orbit. For the Electron that's about 300 kilograms, while the Falcon 9 can carry 22 tons. I am sure you are starting to see that there's kind of a big performance gap between the two and of course there's, there are many more differences like uh, the Falcon 9 being the only US launch vehicle that's licensed to carry astronauts to the space stations, to the space station out of right now. Um, if you want to learn more about this, I highly recommend some of the ubiquitous space channels like uh, Scott Manley, Marcus House and the Everyday Astronaut. Um, I'm going to put some links in the description. So now, how exactly does a CubeSat get to space and which of these launch vehicles makes more sense to book a spot on? As you know, a CubeSat weighs maybe a few kilograms up to a dozen or two dozen kilograms, so it definitely won't be the only payload flying on any rocket. Um, it will fly as a secondary payload, this is where the term rideshare comes into play. As Rocket Lab's Electron can only lift uh, 300 kilograms to low Earth orbit, it will be pricier per kilogram than the Falcon 9, which will also trickle down to secondary payloads. So it's a great choice if you have a, a medium-sized satellite that weighs a few hundred kilograms and you need to get into a very specific orbit. For that, it's the ideal choice. But if you want your CubeSat to get to orbit for as little money as possible, a rideshare on a Falcon 9 will definitely save you some bucks. You will not get to the exact orbit or be able to choose an orbit because you will just be along for the ride basically, but it's definitely at the moment the least expensive option for a CubeSat mission. In the case of SpaceX, they even have a dedicated line of missions called the Transporter Missions, where they fly a large number of smaller payloads, among which many CubeSats of course. Together with the price you may have heard of $2,000 to $3,000, per kilogram to get to orbit, this kind of starts to sound promising. Suppose your CubeSat is basically ready to go, maybe you want to launch in a year to have some time left for testing and you somehow got the funding together. So you could head over to spacex.com and then navigate to Rideshare. Yeah, and here you can pick your desired orbit, low Earth orbit in our case. And then maybe you want to fly in summer of 25. Yeah. And let's suppose you have built a very light 1U cube set that just weighs one kilogram. So you put this in here and you get an estimated price of $300,000. Oh my fucking God. I mean, what gives? I, th I thought it was supposed to be like $2,000 to $3,000 for a kilogram. Turns out that things are unfortunately not that simple and um, SpaceX charges a flat 0.3 million dollars for up to, I think, 50 kilograms. Let's try this. Yeah, 50 is still 300k, 100 kilograms. That, yeah, it goes up from there. So, bummer. What next? Well, this is where launch service providers like NanoRax and XLaunch come into play. You see, it would be a huge pain in the butt for SpaceX to deal with dozens of CubeSats developers individually, so they kind of set the barrier to entry at uh, 300,000 and let all the smaller contracts go to these aggregator companies. And 
their job basically is to make sure that every customer is vetted, the CubeSats adhere to all the rel relevant standards, they are tested, they have all the licensing correct, and they are just all around safe. In the end, SpaceX will then only deal with this aggregated company instead of dozens of smaller customers. Now, what effect does that have on what we pay to launch our CubeSat? Well, unfortunately, as of now, the industry is not quite there yet where everybody just discloses their prices uh, transparently. So it's still kind of a, you know, inquire for pricing uh, situation where you kind of know that you, you will not be able to afford it if you have to inquire about the price. If you search around a little, you will find prices quoted in the 80 to 100,000 uh, dollars range with educational discounts of up to 50%. I have linked a, an article below that goes into a bit of detail uh, on this. So that's pretty far from the three grand we we're hoping for. But of course the launch service providers will want to make a profit. And I also think in the 100k price tag there is uh, some testing included, but that's kind of where my, my knowledge gets a bit murky. But there you have it. Um, as of now, in 2024, the best case scenario would be 40 to 50 grand to launch a, a one new CubeSat if it is a university project. For my part, I'm of course hoping that these prices will rapidly decrease in the next decade. Um, if Starship comes online and we assume a somewhat conservative price point of $300 per kilogram to low Earth orbit, I think it will make a 30,000% markup hard to justify for launch service providers. So at least some of this saving will trickle down to the individual customers. And of course, maybe there will, you know, be other launch service providers that cater to a more budget-minded um, segment and who also maybe have more price transparency. It's, uh, that's a thing that I would really wish for. And for existing launch service providers, um, if there are many more CubeSat projects, many more customers, um, at some point economies of scale will start to kick in and they will be able to offer their services at a lower price point. So all in all, maybe now is a pretty opportune moment to start, a, to start developing a CubeSat project. So that we could profit from lower prices in, you know, a decade. <laughs> oh, and one interesting and kind of new aspect of rideshare missions are space talks, but let's save that for another side note video. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know if you like this video and I will see you in the next one.